Today's e-learning session is to learn about assisted devices for safety. So this e-learning session is co-provided by Momiji Healthcare Society and Japanese Social Services and A4 Center. So before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes. So this session is recorded. So please refrain from recording or taking photo of this session. And you will receive a copy of the presentation slide after the session. So you don't have to write everything. And you are muted during the presentation. So please stay muted until the Q&A time comes. And please keep your note for any comments or questions during the presentation. So at the Q&A session, uh, please raise your hand for your comments or question. And you can unmute yourself when your name is called. We also uh, received a question from chat. So you can just type your question in the chat and uh, we will pick up the question from there during the Q&A time. And it is up to you to have uh, your video on. That will be very appreciated if you could turn on the video and it will be more wonderful for guest speaker to interact with you. All right, so next is we would like to introduce hosting organization of today's seminar. So the first GSM from Momiji Health Care Society, please go ahead. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, so my name is Chie. I am a social worker at Momiji Healthcare Society. We're a nonprofit supportive housing in Scarborough, uh, serving seniors and caregivers in English and Japanese. And we have a virtual and in-person programs for seniors and caregivers um, provided in GTA, um, various places uh, for lunch meeting and so on, and also at Momiji. And uh, we, we've had the Seniors in IT and Beyond project, which is uh, consultation services on IT devices for seniors, which was running until the end of last year. I'm sorry, that's March. And it ended, but then uh, because of, we get a lot of like needs expressed to us. So we are continuing to provide it a little more smaller scale, uh, but uh, so it's the booking basis. So if you're interested in learning about, uh, you know, your new newly acquired devices or uh, all those uh, internet related things. And uh, you're welcome to call us and the book appointment. And we have a Tori Ichi Bento fundraising this month as well. Uh, you have to order by April 14th at noon uh, to pick up at, uh, at, at Momiji on April 19th. So uh, if you can support Momiji uh, with eating yummy bento, that would be great to uh, participate. Thank you. Thank you, Chie san uh, so next up is Japanese social services. So my name is Rumiko from Japanese social services. So Japanese social services are a nonprofit agency that provide counseling and programs in both English and Japanese. Um, so you can reach us by phone or email. So our phone number is 416-385-9200 or email info at best.ca. Um, so we have online senior yoga term 14 will be starting from May 8th and we are still accepting new registration. So if anyone interested, please feel, feel free to contact us for more information by email or phone. Thank you. Okay, so next up is Angela from iPhone Center. Angela, please go ahead. Thanks, Rumiko. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you again. Um, my name is Angela, the social worker from Ehan Center for Geriatric Care. Uh, Ehan is a nonprofit organization for uh, senior care. Uh, we deliver uh, qual high quality cultural appropriate services to Chinese and other Asian seniors. Uh, we also have a community professional team to serve people, I mean, especially seniors um, who live in their own place. Uh, we also have support for caregiver education in our services. So if you would like to know more information about uh, our organization and our services, so you can log at the website on the screen and also you can give us a call 
which is on the screen, 416-412-4570 uh, for information and the referral. Thanks, Rumiko. Hey, thank you, Angela. All right, so um, before we begin, we would like to remind you that um, this inf the information contained in today's presentation is provided for general information purpose only that is accurate as of April 2023. So information may change with time. So this presentation does not constitute medical advice nor to recommend or advertise specific device vendors or makers. So participants are strongly encouraged to seek medical advice from their healthcare providers and explore different vendors and makers. Right, so let me introduce our guest speakers. Uh, Jay Samir from MedPlus Medical Equipment Distribution. Uh, so Jay, please take away. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, I've been in this industry for about eight years now. Uh, I first started as a technician, uh, fixing equipment, uh, delivering equipment, setting up equipment. Uh, I'm now on the other side of the business, on the uh, sales and service side. Um, uh, yes, um, so you can uh, go to the next slide there. All right, so yeah, my name is Jay Samuels. I'm a rehab sales consultant at a company called MedPlus Medical Equipment Distribution. Uh, my email is there and my uh, company phone number as well. Okay, so if anyone has any uh, questions after this or Anytime they can give me a call and they can send me an email. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, next slide, please. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so when to consider getting safety devices. Um, this is different for everybody, um, but for um, most people, it's a loss of confidence. Uh, so it could be a loss of confidence or, um, you know, trying to get your independence back. You want to be independent, but you do need that. The, the help to get to some places. And for example, um, when going to the washroom, uh, when going for meals, uh, when getting in and out of bed in the morning or at night, and when leaving the place of residence. So if you're going to um, an outing, you're going to the mall, you're going to a doctor's appointment, such on. Yeah. Uh, so when to consider getting safety devices. Um, so with beginning on the last slide, uh, so compromised physical abilities, which might be, um, which might be affecting your, you know, confidence and such like that, and your independence to do what you normally want to do. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, so compromised physical abilities. So you may have just had an operation, an injury. You may be dizzy from one of those two. Uh, you may have a weakness, uh, fatigue, and balance issues. Uh, these are all normal things that most of us suffer from. And these, here are some equipment that will help you kind of get that confidence back and independence, um, as well as really improve your lifestyle. Next slide, please. So this is a type one walker. Um, these walkers are very, very popular for somebody who's just had an operation or an injury or has left the hospital. Uh, these walkers are best for people that need to move slowly, uh, they tend to lean forward. Uh, they need the most stability while walking. Often users will receive these walkers after being discharged from the hospital, either from post-operation or injury. As I said, uh, these walkers are available with or without skis as well. They, um, sorry, with or without wheels as well can have skis that make it easy to slide on all surfaces. They are extremely lightweight and foldable as well by two clicks of a button. Uh, they're very easy to go in a car. Um, they're very cost affordable. Um, I did put some approximate pricing. Prices will vary from vendor to vendor, depending on pickup or delivery, and also the add-ons. For example, if you go for front wheels and skis at the back, no wheels, such like that. Uh, they are ADP fundable, which we'll get to ADP toward the end of the slide, which is the assistive devices program, which helps pay up to 75% of equipment. Um, sometimes in the 
uh, recently with walkers it has not been quite 75% because there's um, add-ons, uh, delivery charges and such like that. Um, so that is something good to know um, because the government has actually cut a little bit of funding for walkers, which means the price went up as well prices uh, have gone up on the walkers. So it's not quite 75% anymore, but it's, uh, it's still a great help. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so these are type two walkers. You may see many of these uh, around the, the homes. Um, this, for example, in the picture is called a Nexus. It's probably the most popular walker on the market. Um, this walker is used for indoor applications. It is for someone that is more active. This walker has two brakes, a seat and a basket, as well as lightweight and foldable. This walker, compared to the last one, you'll have to put the brakes on before you sit down as well before you start going. If somebody has arthritis in their fingers, hands, it sometimes can be hard to put on the brakes, which is why the type one walker is really a go-to. Um, this walker is great as well because it has a basket and it has some available options as well. So you can have a cup holder, slow down brakes, which are in the photo there. They basically apply resistance to the wheels um, helps reduce the speed of the walker. So if you push it, it would just slow, it would just slow down and stop rather than just keep going and running away from it. Uh, you can get an oxygen tank holder if needed and a tray for the seat. Uh, these walkers as well are ADP fundable, retail approximately $400. Um, prices again will vary. Uh, the ADP price, depending on if you're having it delivered or picking up is around $170. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so very similar to the last walker. Uh, the walker shown in the picture is a, is a Trillium 8. It's a little bit larger than the Nexus, a little more sturdy. It has a leather seat. Uh, but all walkers gone through the ADP program are very high quality, and they're able to get parts for them, which is very important. Uh, so this walker is meant for indoor and outdoor applications. Uh, the reason for that compared to the Type 2 is that it has larger wheels. A type three walker comes with eight inch wheels compared to the six inch and four inch wheels of a type two. Um, so just like the type two, this has a seat, two brakes and a basket. Available options again are cup holder, slow down brakes, option tank holder, tray for seat. And you may see more options depending on models. Again, ADP fundable, uh, retail prices range from about 450 if not more for these walkers, and the ADP price is around 180. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so walker maintenance. Um, the first walker I went through was the basic aluminum, which is the type one. That doesn't really need any maintenance. Um, they are meant to last um, the, the, the five years that you may use it or, or however long you need to use it. Uh, but the last two walkers I discussed, type two and three, they have the brakes. And the brakes do need adjustment. Um, walker brakes need tightening because the wheels get worn out. This is a simple fix um, and should be done by a technician prior to the brakes no longer working. Sometimes it's hard to determine when that will be. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll just go downstairs one day and the brakes stop working, and that is totally normal. Um, definitely try to call a service technician as soon as possible because not having the brakes when you're going to sit on a walker is very dangerous as it can roll away from you. Um, depending on use, this should be done annually. Uh, sometimes it's hard to have it done annually, but if it's possible, you know who you purchase it from, you know a vendor. Um, it's worth paying for the service call to make sure they're all tight and ready to go. Uh, you can replace the wheels if they do get worn out. But sometimes really all you need to do is just have the brakes tightened and, and that's about it. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so this is our first bathroom safety product. Uh, this is one of the most popular items put into a bathroom um, when you're starting to need uh, certain items. Uh, the toilet safety, uh, sorry, raised toilet seat. This is a raised toilet seat with arms. It can come without arms. It can also come in different versions. You can get, this is a, a clamp on raised toilet seat. Um, you can see at the front of it, there's a gray, um, it's actually a twist. 
So this will be placed on the toilet. You'll turn it to the right clockwise about until it's tight, securely on the toilet. There are other ones that you would actually take the original seat, toilet seat off completely, um, put it underneath that, and it'll just rise up your regular toilet seat. So this is something that's more temporary, where you can get something that is more permanent that'll screw on. Um, these products are used to help stand up, be supporting while using the toilet. They provide a raised seat and arms that make it easy to stand. Uh, there are many types, shapes, and sizes. And this one actually is very easy to remove. You just turn that knob and you can clean it um, however you need to. And if you're traveling, you can bring it along with you. Approximate price for these is $70 to about $150. Um, it really just ranges with model, size, um, if you want the arms on, if you don't want the arms on. And yeah, so they're a very, very good product. Next slide, please. All right, so grab bars. So grab bars are extremely important, um, especially when entering and exiting a shower. They should be installed by a professional as well as recommended that an occupational therapist or a trained physiotherapist is seen so they can assess the shower and provide the perfect spot for installation. Grab bars can also be installed beside a toilet, used as a towel rack and come in multiple shapes and sizes. I often see when I go into homes that people are holding on to the original towel rack that was put in the room. And those were not put on to be grabbed. They're put on to hold as much as five pounds. But when you're putting all your pressure to either get up or walk down the hallway, it can be upwards of 100 pounds, which is really not recommended. It can rip off the wall. You can really hurt yourself and, and, and damage the wall as well. Um, but grab bars are perfect for that. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, we have here from 12 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch, 32 inch, L shapes, J shapes, uh, different finishes as well. You know, we can get chrome, white, black. So you can really pick and choose what you like. Um, but as well, um, check with the home management before installing. Uh, I often send grab bars out for installation and the home has said, oh, did you get permission to do that? Um, so definitely check with home management as, as some places have restrictions upon drilling into the walls and tile. Um, they're not ADP fundable. Um, prices vary from, per, um, from about $100 or so to have somebody come out and actually install it. The, pr the price of a grab bar itself is about $30 but it's really the installation cost of having our guy or, some, or any person come out and install it because there is a bit of liability with it as well. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, still on bathroom safety products. So these ones are very important as well. Uh, they go very well with a grab bar um, inside the shower and bath. Uh, we have the first picture is a shower chair. This one has arms and a back. You can get them without arms, without a back. So it's just a stool. Uh, the perfect product for feeling safe and secure while bathing. Shower chairs give a peace of mind for those who cannot stand for long periods of time and are at risk of falls during a shower. The, the bench is a great fix for those who have difficulty getting over the bath. So some baths now are having cutouts with little doors that you can kind of get your feet through if people are having a hard time lifting their legs over the bath. Uh, the bath bench there goes over that ledge, meaning you can just slide right into the shower. Um, this one, you have to put the shower curtain. I'm sure that's a big question. Where does the curtain go? Uh, the curtain will go around this one that you see in the photo. There are um, some bath benches that have a cutout for the curtain to then slide so water doesn't get on the floor. Um, which is which is a very good option. It just doesn't work for all bathtubs. Every bathtub is really different in size and shape. So you'd have to kind of maybe have somebody bring both and see if you can get that. Uh, prices range from 60 to really $300. There are quite fancy ones, ones with more options, such like that, but really basic stuff, which is, is great, uh, ranges from about yeah, 60 to $300. 
And again, they're not ADP fundable. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so this product is new on the market somewhat, um, may have been around a bit longer, but not as efficient as it is today. So if you're having troubles getting in and out of the bath, a bath lift is a relatively new product. It works by a battery powered motor that lowers you down into the tub. It also has side panels that make it easy to slide over, just like the transfer bench, how you would slide over into the tub. Um, it also lifts you up when it, uh, from being lowered into the tub, it is attached to the floor by suction cups, very high quality, so it will not slide when you're in it. Um, it does not need to be screwed in, so there's no need to worry about flooding or leaks or anything like that. Usually the motor, uh, sorry, the battery is actually in the, the, um, the controller. You can kind of see it in the photo. There's a few buttons on the controller. Um, it's actually there. It needs to be charged. I like to say all the time when you're not using it, just keep it on the charger. That way it's always ready to go. But once a week should really be fine. Um, if we'd like to play the video, it is there. Warm bath is one of life's simple pleasures. A bath can relax sore muscles, relieve stress, and even help improve your circulation. To ensure your safety while you enjoy all the benefits a bath can offer, Drive Medical offers their innovative Bellavita Auto Bath Lifter. This two-piece bath lift is easy to assemble, install, and operate with no tools required and fits into standard and deeper tubs. Weighing only 20 and a half pounds, the Bella Vita is the lightest bath lift on the market, but it can safely support up to 300 pounds. Its ergonomic design, padded seat and backrest provides greater comfort and safety to the user. A unique feature of the Bella Vita is that once lowered, the back angle adjusts independently from the lowering motion, allowing the user to sit upright when in motion. At any time, the backrest can recline to 50 degrees, so users have more room to stretch out while bathing. Four durable suction cups stabilize and secure the bath lift, and this waterproof hand remote can be hung on the hook provided on the bath lift or can float, making it convenient to access the easy-to-use color-coded control buttons while bathing. This bath lift can lower to 2.3 inches, so users get a better soak and it can rise to a record 18.8 inches, allowing users to get out of deeper tubs with greater ease. When raised, the side flaps create a transfer surface for getting in and out of the lift. The Bella Vita is also equipped with a smart battery that ensures there is enough power to lower and raise the user, preventing the user from remaining in a lowered position for too long. And charging the battery is a breeze, as the hand control can easily be unplugged from the bath lift and connected to the charger. The Bella Vita Slim Profile enhances the bathing experience. Its lightweight two-piece construction and folding back makes disassembly, transport, and storage simple and convenient. And the washable hygienic seat and backrest cover sets are available in white, blue, or gray to match any bathroom decor. You can always count on Drive Medical to bring you convenient and innovative lifestyle solutions now and for the road ahead. Thank you for playing that. Um, it is a very good product. I have used it for quite a few clients as of recent, and I haven't heard anything back, which usually in this industry means it's going very good. <laughs> the next slide, please. And sorry, uh, the price of that is about $900. Uh, just from past experience, um, I have sold more that are more than that, but the base price is usually around the $900 mark. Uh, so home care beds. So this is um, something I really specialize in. I do a lot of these beds uh, for long-term care, retirement, all sorts of homes, uh, and even, um, residential homes. Um, so these beds are, I don't like to use the word hospital bed, but electric home care bed is really a good word for it because it is, you're not in the hospital using this bed particularly, you're at home. Um, the benefits of these beds is height adjustment. So if you find your bed is too high, you find your bed is too low, you can really adjust it to what would be perfect. Um, some people like to sleep at a very low height and then 
That way, in case you were to fall out of bed, you are much lower to the ground. There's less risk of any damage. Um, you can also get things called fall mats, which go beside the bed um, in case you were to accidentally fall out of some sort. Um, and then when they want to get out of bed, they raise it. So you're almost in a standing position. So you don't have to use a lot of core strength to get out of bed. And uh, you can also hold on to the side rails. So the benefits of these beds are height adjustment, head and foot support. So the head goes up to almost 90 degrees. The foot comes up as well. Um, you can get upgraded pressure relieving mattresses. Usually when you buy a bed package from a company, it comes with a standard mattress with the bed. That is just gonna be a basic foam, still a good mattress, but you can really upgrade to a higher end foam, a gel and an air mattress, which is um, the maximum pressure relief. It's great for healing any kind of sore. Uh, and there's also support rails. So you can see in the photo, um, beside the head of the bed, there's support rails. They go up and down and they make it very easy to push off of and get out of bed. They're not necessarily for keeping you in the bed. You can get full rails for the entire bed and those will definitely keep you in, but you'll need somebody in the morning and at night to put them up and down for you. These, these rails can be done by yourself if needed. So home care beds can be purchased or rented. In many cases, clients will rent for the first month to try it out. And then they'll purchase the equipment if it's working for them. It's improving their morning and nightly routines. There are many beds and mattresses to choose from. As I said before, foam, gel, or air are the surfaces. Um, air, again, provides the most um, pressure relief. There usually is a pump to go along with that, so it would have to be plugged in and run 24-7. They do not make nearly any noise anymore. They used to, but their technology has changed. Uh, a bed packages, from my experience, start at $1,600 and can go upwards of, there's really no limit when it comes to beds. Um, I see all the time, you know, four or five, six thousand dollar bed packages, completely normal. This is something that you're going to be in for a long time and it's well worth the money. Next slide, please. Thank you. So bed rails and safety poles. So to con continue on bedroom safety products, um, if you do not have a hospital bed, these are some products that are great to just add on to a regular bed. Um, so the first one is a bed rail is recommended for those who have who are recommended who need to pull themselves into bed as well as push themselves out of bed. Uh, bed rails are an inexpensive way of solving the problem. The bed rail in the photo is called an M rail because it kind of has uh, that black handle that looks like an M. It has crossbars to, to reduce any kind of choking hazard, any kind of entrapment. Um, some do not have that, but it's very important to to get a, get a quality bed rail, especially if you are on the weaker side and wouldn't be able to kind of pull yourself up if you did get stuck or anything like that. Um, safety poles can be installed beside the bed, um, uh, also known as a Saska pole. As a good support, um, having, having something to grab onto rather than pushing off the bed is a simple solution to the problem. I see a lot in my, uh, in my work days of people trying with their wrists to push off the soft mattress. And you really, you really lose a lot of your, your strength by doing that because the bed is soaking up most of the, most of the pressure when you're pushing. Uh, it's better to pull if you can or push off a bed rail uh, that is solid rather than the soft mattress. Uh, safety bowls can also be installed in the bathroom. They do not need to be screwed into the ceiling as it is a pressure system. Um, you can see in the photo, he's holding onto a bar just above the toilet. That's called a super bar. It does move when you lift it and slide it. Um, so it does not just stay there in front of the toilet. Um, it can be moved completely in a 360. It'll just stop at some certain points and it's great. So in that photo there, he can probably use it to get out of the shower and to get off the toilet and just to feel secure as well. Um, they're very inexpensive. Um, the bed rails, sorry, are very inexpensive. They range from about $30 and up to about $300. The Saskapole you see there with the extended bar is about 
five to six hundred dollars, depending on installation. And it's a very, very good product. It doesn't damage the, the room at all. Thank you. Next slide. So now we're getting into wheelchairs. Um, so this is something I do specialize in. Most of my day is spent working with wheelchairs. Um, this, these two wheelchairs here are transport chairs, also known as the one on the, on the right is also known as a type one. Um, transport chairs, the benefits of these are lightweight, easy to transport, they're foldable and they're inexpensive. Um, the disadvantages of transport chairs should not be sat on for long periods of time as the seat and back are not pressure relieving, even with an added cushion. Um, that is because these seats are not solid. They are like a um, kind of like a string seat. They do not really support you. They tend to put a lot of pressure onto the coccyx area um, as it is not designed to be sat in for long periods of time. But not to say they're not good. These are very good for if you need to go to a doctor's appointment, if you just need to get downstairs quickly, if your family is not able to lift your standard wheelchair and you need this for um, any kind of outing, not long, but any kind of outing. Um, and you'll see these a lot in, uh, in homes, just people going down for dinner and such like that and then sitting onto a regular chair. But these really should not be sat on for a long period of time. Um, as well, you must have someone push you with uh, the transport chair on the left, and you must have someone apply the brakes. The type one on the right there is, they are very heavy as well. May, mostly the seats are made out of leather. They are solid steel and they are very heavy. So those are very hard for people to kind of put into a car and such if, you know, if, um, you know, your son or daughter, or whoever's putting in the car for you is, is you know, not very strong or doesn't have a big car, they can be pretty difficult. That's why just the standard transfer chair on the left is really a lot better for that kind of stuff. Uh, transfer chairs are great for short distances, used for appointments, meals and outings. Um, not ADP fundable. You can get a type one chair uh, on the right, ADP funded, but just the way that the, the dollars end up working, you may as well purchase it retail. Um, ADP price actually ends up being more for that chair, just um, because the government pays more for that chair and then your 25% portion, which I'll get to later, ends up being pretty much the same as retail. So I would definitely not go through ADP with one of those chairs and I can explain that a bit further along. Next slide, please, thank you. So um, this is a type two chair. Um, type two and type three are very, very similar. Um, basically the difference between a type two and a type three is the wheels can move up and down on a type two, where a type three, they can move up, sorry, the back wheels, the large wheels can move up and down on a type two. And on a type three, they can move up and down and forwards and backwards. So if somebody is more active and they're using the chair a lot, you're gonna to want to put them into a type three because you can really move those wheels where you need to. Um, for example, if they're propelling themselves with their hands and you want the wheels to be really over your arms so that you get the maximum amount of push. If it's not working with the type two and you need to move the wheels more forward to kind of get that perfect center of gravity, you're gonna want the type three. Um, type two is perfect for someone who can wheel themselves, um, doesn't need that full range of motion, and also has a lot of help being pushed a lot of the times. Seating wise though, very similar. Um, the benefits of these chairs, they're lightweight, you can take them apart. Um, the back flips off, the cushion comes off using Velcro, the uh, leg rests come off as well, and as even the large wheels as well, with the click of a button can be pulled off. Um, they're customizable seating. All these chairs can have different backs, different cushions, different size leg rests, uh, rate elevating and non-elevating. Um, a chair like this has spoked wheels, kind of like a bicycle. You can get different kinds of wheels, air tires, non-air tires. Uh, these chairs are very, very easy to maneuver. 
and you can sit in long periods of time for these chairs, which is very important. So unlike the transport chairs and the type one, these chairs are meant for you to sit in all day, all day long, with no risk of getting sores or anything like that. Um, a more advanced seating system, these wheelchairs are fully customizable for the client's size, shape, and physical abilities. Uh, this is more someone who will spend the majority of their time in the wheelchair. This is possible with the pressure relieving seating. The chairs have a pressure relieving cushion and back to prevent sores, back pain, and incorrect posture. So these chairs are ADP fundable. I definitely suggest going through ADPs for these chairs as this will be a true 75% the government will pay. Uh, retail is about $2,500 or more and the ADP price is usually around 600, um, depending on size. Um, chairs do not, it's kind of not like a t-shirt where if you buy a large and a medium, it's the same price. Um, if the larger you go with the chair, the more expensive it does get. Next slide, please. So this is a category five wheelchair. Um, it's very similar in ways to the type two and three, but it does um, have the added tilt and recline feature. This is for somebody who is going to lean forward a lot, who needs pressure distribution. Um, somebody who's not active and cannot move themselves. Um, somebody who has posture issues um, and it's it's a it's a very good chair um, for when you need it um, benefits of these chairs maximum pressure relief um, the reason is is because when it's tilted um, you're actually putting pressure onto your back instead of, and you're distributing it from your coccyx area to your back and so forth so these chairs can be set at any um, degree tilt. Um, it's not just a standard size. You can really stop wherever you'd like. Um, they have custom headrest support, which can go, depending on how your head is, you can go left, right. It's fully universal. Um, it, can, it can really go anywhere forward and back, depending on how your, where your head is placed. Uh, just like the other ones, it's all customizable seating. So you may have heard of Rojo, and these chairs are very, very popular to have Rojos on them. So just like the Cutaway 2, this chair is a fully customized seating. It has added tilt feature for those who are at risk of falling out, tend to lean forward, and need pressure taken off the coccyx area, as well as available with elevating leg rest to reduce swollen legs and feet. ADP fundable. Um, this is the chair that I mainly deal with a lot. Um, the approximate retail price is about 4,000 and the average ADP price is about $1,000. Okay, um, so wheelchair seating. So I did kind of go off a bit there. I was talking about uh, the Rojo, which you can see at the bottom, but there are other cushions for people who do not have any pressure issues. Um, so we can start with the foam cushion, no maintenance, only cleanings required. It's lightweight and minimal pressure relief. So it's a cushion you can sit in all day, but you're not gonna get the same uh, pressure distribution and relief as you would with the next two cushions. Um, so a gel cushion, again, no maintenance is required, only cleaning, advanced pressure relief, microclimate management, so cooling sensation, and that is working, that's basically the gel, how it distributes um, heat compared to foam and also vibration dampening. So the foam really can, uh, sorry, the gel can really absorb bumps. So if somebody's going down the sidewalk, um, any kind of gravel, stuff like that, the, the gel really can like almost suck up that, that, that vibration. Um, and then of course is the Rojo, the air cushion. Um, Rojo is a brand of cushion. It is just known as the most popular air cushion. Um, so a lot of people call it the Rojo cushion, but it is just an air cushion. Uh, maximum pressure relief, maintenance is required, cleaning and air pressure. I kind of have a rule of thumb where you want your Rojo pumped to about 70%, but that's really what I try to tell people who aren't familiar with it and aren't gonna get much help. Um, from staffing, um, just as a kind of like a rule of thumb, you definitely do not want to pump all the way as it'll 
is uh, it'll actually cause damage to the skin. Um, the Rojo cushion should be pumped so the client is not bottoming out and should be suspended above the seat pan of the wheelchair. So if somebody is sitting on a Rojo, you want to um, kind of feel under that area to make sure they're not sitting on the seat pan and that because that will uh, uh, cause pressure and possibly a sore. Um, you do not want them kind of floating too much above it. It's kind of a fine line. Um, so that's why I kind of say about 70%. Um, it is not a, a real number, but it's a number that it's, um, if, you, if you're not familiar with them and you just want to pump one up, you really should be about that. Um, but everybody is different as well. If you're not comfortable, you find like you're too sunk in, you can do that. Um, Rojo does, the Rojo cushion comes with a pump, um, not electric or anything, just a manual pump. Uh, and again, you just need to clean the Rojo. Um, all, sorry, all, uh, all these cushions are ADP fundable. Um, pricing is kind of subject to change, but as well, it gets added into the total cost of your wheelchair. Um, a Rojo, for example, is about $650 to $800, depending on size, and the, and the government pays about 75% of it. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, so what is ADP? So I've been waiting to get to this because I do talk a lot about ADP, and ADP is a big part of the business in, in general, uh, in the industry. Um, so what is ADP? ADP is financial assistance. ADP pays up to 75% of the cost of equipment, such as artificial limbs, walkers, wheelchairs, and breathing aids. Unfortunately, ADP does not pay for beds and bathroom safety equipment, uh, which would be great, but unfortunately it does not. Um, ADP will cover walkers for clients every five years. So if you've gotten a walker and five years is up, you are eligible for a new one. You will have to um, let the company know that you're purchasing it from, that you have got one five years ago, because often they still want to, ADP wants to know if you are still using that walker, if it's still in good condition. So what, what's, what it's called is getting the company to a repair quote, which basically states that this walker is five years old and it's going to cost more to fix it than for ADP to get a new one. Um, that doesn't come up too often, but um, it is it is part of getting a walker, but your vendor and your company should know that, and as well as your uh, ADP authorizer. ADP will cover wheelchairs every five years and the seating every two years. So if you purchase a wheelchair today, um, in two years from now, you're eligible for new seating regardless. Uh, they will pay 75% of it. And this is because seating does wear out. It, also, it often gets dirty as well if it's not totally maintained properly. Uh, for example, a foam cushion after two years of being sat on will tend to smush down a bit, um, kind of lose its shape. And that's just from moving around, heat, um, and just the, um, being used every single day, which a lot of people do. Uh, so the government will, after two years, um, pay for 75% using through ADP. Um, you want to, you want to, I can, on the next slide, I will go over, um, you want to contact um, the local health integration network or your OT that you're familiar with or your PT, and they will help you start that process. ADP will cover a new wheelchair before the five years if the client's condition has changed. So if you're in a type two or three wheelchair and you are needing a type five, ADP will cover the type five. If you're in a type five and your conditions change better, it is rare. Um, they may cover a type two or three, depending on circumstances. Um, but if you are in a type two or three and um, your condition has changed, you've declined, uh, they will cover a type five. So that's important to know because people, you know, get into a type two or type three, if they're active and something happens, fall, stroke, something like that, um, and they decline and they need a type five wheelchair. Uh, next slide, please, Chief. Uh, 
Okay, I, I will hurry up here. I know uh, I gotta get going. Um, how to use the ADP program. So um, call the local health integration network. This is the Scarborough number here, 1-800-263-3877. Um, ask, to, ask to have an occupational therapist or ADP licensed physiotherapist do an assessment. It can take two to six weeks or longer depending on demand. Uh, right now it is toward the more the six week uh, length. Contact a vendor or ask the occupational therapist or physiotherapist to recommend one. Um, you can as well pay for a private assessment if time is an issue. Ask your local vendor to supply an OT. Uh, so for example, myself, I know quite a few OTs that do side work and they're willing to do private visits after hours. Uh, prices will vary depending on OT, amount of visits and category of equipment type. So for example, a, a walker to a wheelchair, to a piece of power equipment, they will charge different rates. Next slide, please. Okay, so service or repairs, contact a vendor. Uh, discuss the issue, have a technician come out for assessment. If possible, send a photo. Uh, it just helps um, know which kind of product you have and what the issue is. Uh, for parts and pay for parts and labor of the installation. Uh, note, you can have a, a repair done by any vendor company. If you've recently purchased a walker, I would suggest going to them for repairs or service. They're, they're going to have your, um, your account already there. They can see what equipment you have and know what parts. Um, this is, again, uh, if you purchase from an online retailer and the item is from overseas, it may be impossible to fix or find parts. Uh, purchase at your own risk. For example, Amazon, Walmart, eBay. If you see a price that's too good to be true, it probably is. Um, unfortunately, when things like that break, we just don't have the parts to fix them. Costs vary from vendor to vendor. Try to use a local vendor. If Walker is new, you may be under warranty, usually one year from date of purchase. ADP will not cover repairs. Oh, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Martin, could you stop the recording?